This is problem 5 from chapter 19. So here we have a gear and a gear rack. And very important to remember that when we have a gear, any surface between two gears always has friction. And it has enough friction not to permit slipping. So we always have rolling without slipping. So that friction force will never be the impending motion friction force, so we will not assume that the force is related to the normal. So the friction force is always an independent force from the normal that we have to calculate using our free body diagram and our equation of motion. In this problem, they ask us to find the time for the gear to reach an angular velocity of 20 radians per second. So as you see, since we have rolling without slipping, these two points have exactly the same velocity. So if we call this point A and this point A prime, we will have that the velocity of A will be equal to the velocity of A prime. We have that this gear is rotating respect to point O. Therefore, we have an angular velocity of that gear that is rotating with respect to O, therefore the velocity of A will be in this direction and the velocity of the A will be omega R, right? Omega is known and R is known, so this is 20 times 0 0.15, therefore the velocity of A, which is the same, the velocity of A prime, because both points have the same velocity will be equal to 3 meters over second. So that's a value that is given. And we, what we want to find is time if we start from rest when we apply that force of 20 uh, newtons required to reach that velocity. So we, we start from rest, start applying this force 200 newtons, and this gear starts spinning, right? How much time do we require to have that linear velocity that will convert in this angular velocity of the gear. The first thing that we will do is our free body diagrams. So I will do the free body diagram of the gear. And I will do the free body diagram of the gear rack. So for the gear, we have here a pin. Whenever we have a pin, we have two reactions, OX and OY. Of course, we have the weight as well. Let me not forget the weight. And obviously, the weight will be the mass times the gravity, which will be 30 times 9.81 newtons. And then we have the interaction between those two surfaces. I said that we have a normal force, right? And then we have the friction force. Since this is moving in this direction, this is driving the gear to move in that direction, so it creates a friction force in this direction. Okay, so this is my free body diagram from the gear, and then I have to do the free body diagram of the rack. By action and reaction, I will have exactly the same normal force, and in the opposite direction, and also the friction force, the same in opposite direction. We, I have a normal force between the rack and the uh, floor. It says that it's smooth. Therefore, we only have a normal force. Let me call it that normal force from the surface. And we do not have friction force between that rack and that floor. So this is free to move, right? And then, of course, we have the weight. Let me call it weight of the rack. And here we have the weight of the rack is equals to 29.81 newtons. Now that we have the uh, free body theorems, we have to decide which kind of approach we like to use. As you remember, we have three different approach we could use. is force and acceleration, right, which is our equation of motion, we could use energy as well, right? When do we use force and acceleration? When we want to find either forces related to an acceleration or vice versa, right? 
When do we use energy and work? When we want to relate forces and distance. In this case, we want to relate those forces with time. Therefore, we will use the approach of linear and angular momentum. Since this is rotating for the gear, we will apply the principle of angular momentum. And for the gear rack, we will apply the uh, principle of linear momentum. So, let's apply first the principle of angular momentum. The initial uh, angular momentum plus all the moments integrated respect to time respect to the same point will be equals to the final angular momentum. Since we started from rest, this is equals to zero. Which forces create moment respect to point O? Only the friction force. The normal force passes through that point O, and obviously those two forces do not create moment either. So we have a positive moment times the radius, which is 0 0.15, and if we integrate that respect to time, we will have time over here. And then this will be equals to the definition of angular momentum, which is our inertia respect to the point where we are taking moment, omega. So here, since we are given the radius of gyration, the inertia, remember, the inertia is equals to the ratio of gyration squared times mass. Therefore, I can have here 125 squared times the mass of the gear, which is 30. And they tell us that we want to calculate that time when we reach 20 radians over 6. So we have here our first equation, which is 0 0.50 force times time. This is a friction force. And this value is 0 0.25 square 30 20. So this is my first equation. And for this first equation, I have two unknowns, right? I have the friction force and time. So I need another equation in order to find friction force and then time. So let's use this free body diagram. And for this free body diagram, I use the principle of linear momentum. And this is very similar, right? We can write that the uh, initial linear momentum plus all the integrals of all the forces respect to time, which are the impulse, are equal to the final uh, velocity, right? Since we start from rest, this is equal to zero as well. So I have which forces do I add here? I add 200, right, minus F, and I integrate respect to time, so I have to multiply that time, and this will be equal to the mass of the gear rack, which is 20, times the velocity for that happens, and I already related it, which is 3, right? So as you see here, I have also the same unknown, which is 200t minus ft equals to 20. So as you, I, what I can do to relate those two equations, I can substitute the value of f times t, which will be this value divided by 0 0.15 over here, and then find the time. And then once I have time, I can find the friction force. So and I'm going to write here the result solving. This is my second equation solving. I have time, and I have the friction force. And I have it right here. The time is 0 0.6, uh, 125 seconds. And the friction force, actually, I have the friction force times the time. I don't I have right near the value. We can calculate it, which is 62.5. So what, do I, what I did was solve for friction times and uh, so include that friction times over here and find the time, right? Very important that we don't need to find that friction force. Nobody asks us, so the final result is this one right here. 
So that time is the time required for this force to move this linear rod to three meters per second and therefore move that gear in an angular velocity of 20 radians over second.